Hi everybody. Um, I'm sorry I don't have a GoPro or anything special. The only thing I have right now is the webcam on my laptop. And so I've got it angled right at, I don't know if you can see this, but I just sauteed up some uh, <clears throat> asparagus. And then I'm going to show you how I cook on my truck. And uh, if you give me a minute, I'm going to tell you, this is a lot of fun. I love cooking on my truck. Most of the things I cook only take eh, about 20 minutes. It took, I mean, I could get it done in a 30-minute break if I take a full 30-minute break. Um, if I've got most of my stuff already prepared. If not, then I have to wait until I have, you know, sometimes I ta I'll take an hour break if I have to prepare something. This is, I cook all of my vegetables in coconut oil. Okay, this is the hard kind. I don't know if you can see down in there. There ain't very much left. I'm almost at a point where I need to go get some more. I use coconut and this is the organic coconut extra virgin oil is what I use. Um, it's cold pressed and unrefined, zero trans fats, non-GMO, cholesterol free, loaded with high energy MCTs, fresh flavor, and aroma. And I also use organic EVOO. I love this. I put it in my hair. I put it on my salads. I put it, uh, I cook with it. Matter of fact, my asparagus is done. Forgive me for standing up and blocking the camera here, but I need to grab my cut board. I have a little mini cutting board that I use. And I'm about to cut up some chicken. If, uh, I've got me a little, it's a cooler, it's a, uh, an electric cooler that I have that I use to uh, store all my things in that I need that are cold um, that need to be refrigerated because with the company that I drive for unless you are a million miler two or three million miler something like that then uh, that's my chicken breast then you don't get an APU unit or unless you're an owner operator but uh we're not allowed to have inverters that connect to the battery. So I found a 2000 watt inverter that has a 12 volt plug on it. I haven't been home to get it yet. Um, it just arrived this week. So I'm really hoping, I am really hoping that it works on this truck because I am looking forward to bringing my Keurig my ninja and also my um my steamer and my dehydrator <laughs> i'm looking forward to all those things excuse the mess but you know everybody who drives a truck and those who don't know that we have limited space on this truck on our trucks so i work with what i have and then nine out of ten time whenever i drop my food sometimes my plate is here and it'll fall lucky coco she gets to eat the whatever falls on the floor and she's usually sitting right there waiting for me to drop some crumbs on the floor but i'm just gonna slice up my chicken meat here real quick i used to have a really good knife i don't know what in the world happened to it i must have brought it at home when i was home the last time i must have brought it inside but um you know, you could slice it, you could dice it. Right now, I'm just going kind of fajita style with the slicing. And I have three basic, in because right now, like I said, I'm just starting out. I'm, um, I'm not going over the top. I don't do any grand, extravagant um, uh, recipes right now. I, I keep it simple. I have the Himalayan salt with the grinder. 
and I salt my meat as I need it. I have the roasted garlic and herb, also grinder, and uh, I because I love garlic. Uh, garlic is one of my favorite. Garlic is so good for you. Um, garlic and onions. Did you know onions is high in fiber? Onions is really good for you. And then I have the uh, peppercorn grinder with the peppercorn medley in it. And these are my three favorite seasonings that I pretty much use on all of my foods. And no, I haven't gotten tired of it yet. <laughs> so, got that. Let's go ahead and throw this. I still have coconut oil in my pan from sauteing the asparagus. Ah, uh, listen to that. Spread it out. Like so. And now, once you put the cold meat in this little 12-volt frying pan that I have, a lot of times it will lower the temperatures. So you don't really get the good sizzle. But, that's what the cap is for. I'll put the top back on the frying pan. It'll build the heat back up. And then, even though I've already smothered that chicken in that coconut oil that I sauteed the asparagus in. And when I put the top on, what it's going to do is it's going to generate that heat all throughout that chicken. And it's pretty much steaming that chicken. So, you are going... You, uh are getting all the, all the health benefits all the health benefits um, from doing it this way that I found there could be other ways other than steaming but this is the way that I found and then because I do cut up a lot of raw chicken or fish on my cutting board I use the disinfectant wipes I used to have the lemon ones, but I ran out, so now I just have the fresh scent. Um, but they're Lysol, disinfected. They kill 99.999% of bacteria, kills cold and flu viruses, kills staph, E. coli, MRSA, salmonella, and strep. So these are perfect for cleaning. I'll take a regular paper towel first. I'll wipe off all the excess that's on my cutting board, just like that, and throw it away. And then I take my Clorox wrap, and this is how I wash my cutting board. I wipe it clean real good, my little cutting board. And I got this at Dollar General. I think it came with the knife. Um, the knife is probably about a six-inch knife with about a... Three, three and a half inch blade. Really good knife. Um, I got it. It came in a package together. I think I paid five bucks for it. Something like that. I try not to spend a lot of money <laughs> with, on uh, stuff, to be honest with you. Excuse me again for getting in front of the camera here. Let me put my cutting board up. Um, as the chicken is sauteing, I always have my bottle of water. handy and it's actually coming out quite nice Let's give it another quick little stir just a couple more minutes it should the chicken will be ready um I have a Sam's Club membership however my sister my sister has a Costco membership and I went out to visit her a few months back when I first started out um, over the road, 48 states, and she brought me to Costco's to get a bunch of stuff for my truck. And one of the things we found at Costco's are these packages of brown rice. It's cooked 100% organic brown rice. Now, yes, it is processed because it's already cooked. It's uh, gluten-free, 100% whole grain. You know, 
you microwave it 90 seconds, it's ready to eat. Well, I put it, I usually mix it in. This particular bowl like this is uh, uh, two servings. Now, I'm going to show you what I found. Give me one second here. Unless I'm out. Uh, oops. I think I'm out, people. Anyway, I found it's called Minute Rice. And, um, excuse me, one second. It's called Minute Rice. And I find it at Walmart. I found it at Food Lion. And I have not found it at Sam's Club. But in most of the grocery stores, I have found it. In, you know, I'm sure it's there in most of the grocery stores. And... Um, it's one serving. It's just, it's a, I want to say it's a half a cup of cooked brown rice. And they even have one with the brown, brown rice and wild rice or something like that together. It's really good. You get two cups. Yeah, it's a little pricey. It's two something. But you know what? Living on the truck, it's quite worth it. I'm going to tell you. This chicken. Mm. Absolutely divine. Nice, plump, juicy. Look at that. While it's still steaming up a little bit, this is the time I'm going to add my rice. And then what the rice is going to do also, the rice is going to absorb all the juices left over from the chicken. All that chicken broth and all that coconut oil that's left in the pan. The rice is going to absorb all that so you don't miss out on a thing. And you see I only used half of this bowl because it's two servings. So what I'll do is I'll take this bowl let's see if I have any more down here excuse my mess here and I keep eh, and I'm out well I have Ziploc bags quart size Ziploc bags that I keep at hand right here and I'll take it and I'll put it in the Ziploc bag matter of fact I'll use this one this one has my ginger in it but Throwing my bowl of rice in there ain't going to hurt nothing, I'll tell you that. So, that way the rice don't go bad, keeps the air out of it, and I put it right back in the refrigerator. So, there we go, and save that for tomorrow. I like to eat my grain, my carb, this is what I consider my carbohydrate right here, my the brown rice that I'm eating. I like to eat this at lunchtime. And yes, my asparagus is getting cold. But I got a trick for that. This is why I hate cooking my vegetables first. Because <laughs> I always end up <laughs> eating them before the main course is ready. <laughs> they taste so good. So, let that brown rice get... Uh, Heat it up there, add a little bit of salt to it, a little bit of pepper, and as that's warming, you know, this is, uh, this has been quite an adventure. It's all trial and error, you know, it's all what you prefer, what you prefer, what, um, what you're limited to, I'm finding out that living on the truck and trying to eat healthy is, has not really been that difficult. The main thing that I have to remember is like yesterday, I kind of screwed up a little bit. I woke up late. I didn't have time to prepare my meals, uh, my snacks, not my meals, but my snacks. 
I ate a quick breakfast as far as an apple and a yogurt. And then I snacked on. I had um, homemade veggie crackers that my sister makes um, in the dehydrator. I had those with some hummus. And I also had some cottage cheese. And that was all I had. I didn't eat any lunch. And by the time dinner time came around, I was shaking. My blood sugar, I believe, had dropped so much um, that I said, I've got to pull over. I pulled over at a truck stop. I ran in real quick to the subway. Thank God they had the subway there. And I ordered a chopped salad, but I got the veggie delight. I didn't get any meat on it because their meats are processed. They're highly, you know, and that's what I'm really trying to stay away from are the processed foods. Um, they're ro they have the rotisserie chicken, but I don't eat the skin right now. Okay, I'm trying to stay to bare minimal and basics until my body, until I have control over what I eat. I'm such a food addict. I have to really watch what I put in my mouth right now while I'm going on the, while I'm on this journey or you know one bite of anything can ruin it all. Can set me back. You know, and I'm talking like French fries. Oh my god, I love French fries. Make chicken sandwiches. Um I've never really been big on hamburgers. But I tell you what, every now and then I like me a big old juicy burger. And I don't eat that stuff anymore. I can't. I stay out of the fast foods. I stay out of the restaurants. I stay out of the truck stops unless I absolutely positively have to. Um, I don't eat salad dressings. I squeeze lemon, lime, or vinegar on all my salads. Um, and it's really tasty. It sounds so bland. It does, but really it's not. The vegetables are so refreshing, especially on a hot day. There's nothing like a cold salad. It's light. It's refreshing. It fills you up. And the best thing about vegetables, you can eat as much as you want, as often as you want, any way you want them other than deep fried. So... If you saute them, you eat them fresh, you eat them steamed, uh, roasted, oh my goodness, boiled. Boiled isn't too good because it drains a lot of the micronutrients out of them. But, you know, hey, it's still better than nothing. And, I mean, vegetables, are they're so good for you. I think I mentioned it on a post that I don't eat uh fruits right now because they're high in sugars. I'm trying to stay away from it. I know they're healthy for you, but right now my body clings to every little uh, grain, every little gram of sugar that is uh, put into my, into my system. So, okay. The rice is nice and hot and it probably has been for a couple of minutes. Now here's my little trick. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's my little trick. My asparagus that got a little cold, I just put that right back. Put that right back in the pan. Cover it up for about 30 seconds. And it will be nice and warm again. I want to heat me up some black beans, and I love these. I love Goya black beans. I'm not endorsing anything. I'm just telling you. I like it because it's got the pop top, although I do have a can opener, but I prefer the pop top, to be honest with you. I'm not going to make the black beans today. I could heat up a little bit of black beans. Take my plate, put it on the side over the top of my frying pan like that. Give it a little ta-da! <laughs> That's how I like to do it. <laughs> there we go. And now just for a little added flavor and a little added protein I try to get the beans right on the top until I can get to the bottom ones to rinse. These are the ones that will not give you as much gas because that's where my, all the water is on the top. 
and I'll give myself a good three or four spoonfuls of black beans like that. Put my lid right back on the top. Shut it down. Looks like I need another paper towel here. And uh, let those heat up. About 35, 45 seconds. They'll be good. Put my black beans down here in my cooler. And they'll be ready for dinner time. And... Uh, Because you know what? Beans are bland when they come out of cans. Unless you cook them fresh, you know, dried beans yourself and can season them up right nice as they're cooking, get that salt in the water or whatever, they have absolutely no flavor to me. I got to flavor mine up. Let them heat up. In the meantime, bon appetit. Mmm. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy, my friends. Live life. Be strong. Peace out.